Sarah Jane and the Missing Cherry by Colin Titley. Now, having survived the epidemic of 1959 and reached puberty in my teenage years, this was my time. It was the early 1970s where we all danced to that Top of the Pops beat. I had penny round collars on my shirt, more flare trousers, platform shoes on my feet. Now, I went to an old boys school, so with the girls we didn't mix, except on the way home from school, upstairs on the bus, the Radlitter Eccles, number six. Now, I got homework and homework and more homework, so my social life was pretty stark, except for you drama group and a Thursday night and the occasional bit of TIG rugby in Victoria Park. Well, it was in Vicky Park where I first set eyes on 16-year-old Sarah Jane. And to 14-year-old me, well, life was never the same. She was six foot one inch in her stocking feet. And a picture of loveliness as she walked down the street. She was elegant and a proper trained dancer who could drop into the splits on the floor. From big toe to big toe measured six foot four. Well, she was gorgeous. She was beautiful. She was proper and pristine. She said, if you want to get past first base, you'll have to wait till you're 16. So I waited. Well, that day arrived, and the timing was just right, because my mum and dad went out dancing on a Sunday night. So, I showered, and I shaved, and I shampooed, yes all three, and for a bit of luck, I had a splash of Brute 33. Splash it all over. Well, when she arrived, up to my bedroom we went. She took all the clothes off, lay down on the bed, as if from heaven sent. She had breasts, you know, real breasts, breast breasts, not like page three of the sun. And her legs, they were dead, dead long, and they ran all the way up to her bum. Well, she looked at me with those come to bed eyes. So I took all my clothes off and duly obliged. As I lay there, all tentative and nervous, not knowing what to do next, I had a eureka moment. I remembered biology O level text. So I rolled over into the missionary position, in itself quite a feat. After three strokes I withdrew and erupted, it left a damp patch on the sheets. With that feeling of euphoria, I looked over at Sarah Jane, just to confirm that in that moment she felt exactly the same. But one look at her face and I started to fret, because Sarah Jane had not yet broke sweat. Well, I was flummoxed. I stammered. I didn't know what to do. So I made the bold and brave but stupid decision. I rolled over and went for round two. After she'd gone, I went and tidied my room. And despite the total disaster, I felt neither doom nor gloom. And as I searched, and I searched, I felt quite happy and merry. But no matter how hard I looked, it was missing. Sarah Jane took my cherry. 